Today on Forbes, inside the Waymo factory building a robo taxi future. Step outside the main terminal at Phoenix's Sky Harbor Airport to the rideshare zone on a hot spring day, and you'll catch a glimpse of a fast approaching future. Driverless Waymo robo taxis queuing alongside human driven Ubers and Lyfts to take waiting passengers to their next destination. The service just launched in Austin and continues to expand in San Francisco, Los Angeles, and Silicon Valley, but Phoenix has been its home turf for years, kicking off paid public rides there in 2020. And now, the region that helped perfect the AI enabled tech has quietly become Waymo's robo taxi production hub. About 20 minutes east of Phoenix's airport in Mesa, Arizona, is a 239,000 square foot factory that opened in October. Every day, it turns out several battery powered white Jaguar I Pace electric SUVs loaded up with the company's custom designed computer, cameras, radar, and laser LiDAR sensors on a single production line. But the plan is to dramatically scale up the pace and automate output to keep up with growth plans. This, according to Kent Yu, Waymo's head of vehicle manufacturing, who previously managed production operations for Apple and General Motors. Yu told Forbes that this facility will, quote, need to be capable of doing tens of thousands per year. That production scale is small compared to traditional auto plants that make hundreds of thousands of vehicles a year. But the 1,500 robo-taxis Waymo has provide more than 250,000 paid rides a week, or about 24 a day per vehicle, vastly more than personal cars and trucks that are driven only a few times a day. And by the time the Mesa factory gets 10,000 Waymos on the road, the fleet could be booking 250,000 rides a day. That's well over 1.5 million a week. At that scale, Waymo's annual revenue could jump to $2 billion, up from a Forbes estimate of $100 million last year. The company declined to comment on those estimates. The multi-million dollar Mesa facility, Waymo won't say exactly how much it's investing, is vital to the Alphabet Inc. unit's growth goals. After years of testing and pilot programs stretching back to 2009, powered by three funding rounds that raised over $11 billion, not to mention the untold billions more Google poured into the program between 2009 and 2020, Waymo finally became a real business last year. In 2024, it expanded paid rides from its Phoenix operations to San Francisco and Los Angeles, followed by Austin in March. And as it keeps building up in those cities, adding more vehicles and covering even larger service areas, it's preparing to launch this summer in Atlanta and in Miami and Washington, D.C. next year. Meanwhile, Waymo is also testing in Nashville and Tokyo. If those cities are as viable as those it currently operates in, the company could soon be carrying millions of passengers weekly, if not daily. After nearly 16 years, Alphabet's big bet may finally pay off. Alphabet CEO Sundar Pichai has said there's also the possibility of licensing the technology for use in personal vehicles. Last week, Waymo took a step toward doing that by announcing a partnership with Toyota to design a next-generation vehicle platform for autonomous cars and trucks, as well as to study how to use Waymo's system in personal vehicles. The factory is run with Magna, a leading auto engineering and manufacturing company that produced the Jaguar I-Pace Waymo uses at its Graz, Austria plant. It replaces a smaller Detroit assembly facility Waymo opened in 2019, also with Magna, and closed at the end of 2024. Inside the cavernous space, there are no conveyor belts or loud metal stamping you'd see at traditional assembly plants. The work pace is steady, but not high volume. Raw cars roll into the building at one end, with plastic covers on the body panels over pre-cut sections where sensors will be installed. They enter a manual assembly line where dozens of workers remove those covers, bumpers, and other exterior components to begin the process of carefully installing an electrical wire harness, computers, sensors on each corner of the vehicle, and Waymo's telltale so-called top hat unit, housing the main laser LiDAR for 3D vision, multiple cameras, and audio sensors. For full coverage, check out Alan Ownsman's piece on Forbes.com. This is Kieran Meadows from Forbes. Thanks for tuning in.